Hello everyone. In, the, in this video I'd like to show you a new tool which is available in Microscope Image Browser version 2.3 and it is uh, located under the menu File Randomize Files. There are two tools uh, which I will explain in this video. So uh, many of you who actually will work, who actually work with uh, individual images, analysis images taken in different conditions may face the problem that uh, when you analyze, when you know what kind of, from which condition the image is coming from, you get somehow biased in the segmentation. So to deal with this, we are introducing these two tools that allow you to shuffle the files so that uh, you segment those uh, kind of blindly without knowing what this, from which condition this file is coming from. And also, of course, it's possible to restore the, the results. So basically, to take these models and the masks that were generated, and then put them back over the original uh, original images. There are a few limitations which actually could be seen from the help system uh, menus file randomize files. So they are shown here. So. Uh, uh, what is needed that the files which you want to analyze should be placed under the uh, uh, under the different folders. For example, for each condition which you want to with, with which you want to work, uh, you need to put uh, all the files under that folder. So let's take a quick look what I have here. I have images taken under the two conditions, and I put the control cells into this control folder, and the treatment into the another folder. But of course, you may have not two folders, but multiple folders that come from the very different uh, that uh, were taken with the very different conditions. So it's important, however, that uh, so first uh, files per each condition should be in its own folder. Then each file should have the same width, height, dimensions. Uh, it's better if the each of the file has a single image in it, so there is no stacking involved. And um, for models and masks that are used, it's important that uh, the uh, there is only one model or mask file is allowed in each directory. In addition, there is one more requirement which is not mentioned here, is that uh, the models should be organized the same way. So when we organize the models, we have the materials uh, in the kind of in the list, and the similar list should be present for all uh, for all conditions. But uh, I'll show you in the, in a moment. All right, so let's take a look what I have here. So this is the control cell, and uh, just these are normal transmission electron microscopy images, and the treatment cells. It's some kind of the similar images, but they are I just inverted them so that uh, we can clearly see the difference when we evaluate the results of the shuffling process. All right, to start. Um, it's better to go into this uh, sub uh, in the folder where you see both or all kinds of directories which you might have. And then we go to File, Randomize, Files, Randomize. The first task to is to add directories into this list. So I press this Add Directory button and select Control and Treatment. So you can see that these two directories were added into the list of uh, input directories. And uh, what I can do, I can specify the name of the template for output and also the file name where I want my uh, uh, where I want the results to be extracted. So I put, for example, here run randomized. Uh, in addition, because you might have multiple folders here, there is an option to split the results into number of subfolders. So, for example, now I have two subfolders, and let's see how it works. So I press just this randomize. As a result, uh, I have this randomized folder appeared. And if I go to subset 1, I will see that there are some certain files. And these files are kind of random. So for example, the first file comes from the control, the second from this treatment, treatment, control, treatment, and so on. They, and they also kind of randomized in the way. So this, for example, this first image here is not the first or the second image in, the, in here in the control. It's some kind of random. For example, this image is this uh, corresponds to image number four in the original uh, data set. And the same is also for the subset two. Here we also have the 
randomized images. All right, so we shuffled them, and uh, okay, just so this is the result folder. Here I have these two subsets, number of subsets defined by this parameter. Then we have this file, which is very important if we want to restore back the models. It has all information about how the uh, files were renamed and the folders with these uh, with the file names, with the files, with the visual images. Okay, so uh, now we want, for example, do stereology or all kinds of segmentation. So first we need to create a model. And I, for example, put two make two materials. The first will be is going to be nucleus, and another one is mitochondria. And then, for example, I go and I segment uh, mitochondria and nuclei for a few images to kind of show you idea. So this is the nucleus, nuclear nuclear envelope. There is another nuclear envelope. And there is another nuclear envelope. For example, on three slices, and let's say just highlight mitochondria on the same slices. Just kind of very, uh, kind of very roughly. A few of those. Let's say maybe here. Okay. Uh, then I can also add annotations. So, for example, I can use these uh, annotations in order to say, okay, for example, this is going to be my mito one, mito two, and a few others. Okay, so I have this, and then I can go and save the mod model, save model as just some kind of random number. Uh, I can, my, if I have masks, I can also use the mask and save them as well. So, for example, if I do convergent kind of stereology, then in this case I, I need to generate uh, a grid of, I don't know, a certain size. I'm not sure, maybe like 50 pixels for this uh, case or well, whatever. And then I, I may also save this mask with the data. So, for example, if I'm not interested in segmentation this uh, outside of the cell, I can take the brush and kind of quickly delete this from the mask. So like this, so it won't be used in the analysis. Maybe for example here the same. And, uh, maybe this part, just a few slices, and then I also save the mask. Uh, and uh, the next, I need to do the same for another data set. Um, so I generated the mask. Maybe I'll just again to show the point. We'll remove it from view few spots. The mask from outside of the cell. And uh, save it. And now just segment few. So again, I, it's important to add the same material. So we have two materials, nucleus and mito, the same as here. And uh, let's add, for example, nuclear envelope to this one and to this one and add this few mitochondria. And actually the same way we can add few annotations, for example, saying this is our nuclear envelope and this is our nuclear envelope. Now I save the model. All right. So now if I look the file, uh, the each of each of the subsets, I can see that uh, there are my images, random images, and also labels and the mask uh, files. So now we want to restore it back. So I can go to randomize files and restore. So the first I need to select the project file, which is this uh, MIB random. And uh, when it's open, I can see that uh, this is the source of my randomized images, the two subsets, and this is my destination. So the control and treatment. If I have a mask, I can click on this checkbox to include the mask as well. And then after that, I press restore randomized. Uh, when it's done, so what I will get uh, in my original folders, I'll get the two or one if I didn't use, if I haven't included the mask. I'll have these files that are called as labels restore rand today, today's date, year, month, day. 
model and mask and the same for treatment let's open these files so I'll just get back to the control load the control cells load the model and let's see so what we have here okay we have this image so this image number four and uh, it belongs to here the, the same image was in the first subset image one and you see uh, it's totally it's perfectly match the the original data set so do we have anything here no it's not it was only one image so maybe the other ones that we looked for like for the treatment so i load the treatment load the labels and this is like the first one in the treatment already has this the model and it corresponds to slice number probably this one slice number one uh, yes <coughs> and here it was it was this one slice number two okay and then basically the same is for the mask so i can load the mask and i will see that my mask should be correspondingly uh, properly imported from this randomized uh, condition okay so this is one of the things now what happens if for example we already have the uh, in like now we, we have the situations when we have already certain models with our data those models can also be included into this randomization shuffling process let me show you so i'll just go to this randomized and delete everything from here so that it's empty now i will go again to this um, randomize tool uh, select two directories control and uh, treatment and now i'll include the model there are it explains certain conditions which you have to kind of fulfill in order to successfully work with this and uh, okay randomize is fine and then this time i'll just make one folder so the, the idea in this case that I just I want to uh, run shuffle not just the images but also the include the corresponding model in masks together with images so that I continue to work with the model that I already created. So okay, go and randomize this. Let's just delete these files. Okay, so now in this randomized folder I have only one subset 0 and 1 because I have only one where I have all the files in addition to this I have the mask and the model let's take a look on those so I combine the files so what you can see that they are randomly placed here in this uh, in this list here then I can load the model and now the the model will actually kind of correspond to the actual data set from where they're coming from so if I had some kind of partial model as we had in this particular video, I can basically go and continue. So for example, like I can take and draw, let's say, pretend that I have, well, actually just label few more uh, mitochondria. Now uh, let's see, here on this slice, one, two, three. So I have this three extra mitochondria and can save this and then i can go back and restore so let's select the project file so now we have we take the images from the subset one directory and we place them in the control and treatment if this directory is kind of was shifted so it's possible to update it by using the right click and update directory and uh, okay we restore and then now if i just take a look uh, on the control cell and then load this new model that I just exported and I should see that um, I have yes I have these three extra mitochondria uh, segmented transferred so this is the way how the uh, this is the way how you can try to work blindly with your data in order not to get biased uh, towards certain uh, uh, somehow by knowing with what kind of data set you're working at this particular moment of time all right i hope that was helpful
thank you very much for your attention.